Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're enjoying your model railways. Now in this video we're just going to have a brief update where we are on the trusses because uh, that's still ongoing and um, what we're looking at well I'm going to depict it as John Cudahy the castle town flyer on his motorbike on his way to social signal box now if you've seen the last video it was a, an interview with John um, explaining his lifetime on the railways and uh, it was a very interesting um, interview and uh, I'm going to hope and see if we'll uh, come back As you have seen in the intro, um, we have a new locomotive here at the North Eastern. Uh, it's the first one I bought this year. It's a Hornby Thompson Class 01. And it's got a striking detail. Uh, just look at that uh, running gear. Massive boiler. And it fits in well. And it just requires crew and maybe a little bit of coal. With all the locomotives here at the northeastern, they all need some sort of attention. Crew, coal, maybe slight weathering. So let's get on with the update. As you can see, the trusses are piling up. Um, these are waiting to be cleaned and uh, these have been cleaned, they've been degreased to make sure there's no flux on them or anything like that uh, ready for the main assembly and uh, we're slowly getting there um, it's Sunday today and uh, we have so far got 22 built and uh, just need another 14 to go so we shall see how far we get on by the end of the week here we are, the day after the big game, and um, what a game it was. We're almost there folks, we're almost there. So, as you can see, the trusses have been increased. We've gone from 22 this week to 31, so we've only got five more of these trusses to make so hopefully by next weekend we may see the start of the assembly of the roof which would be great so that's where we are at the moment So after speaking to John last week, he mentioned a few details uh, about the signal box. Um, I have the control panel here, as you can see, and uh, I've got his motorbike. But well, if he was here, I'm sure he'd tell us where to put it. Well, you want to put it alongside the wall, Tony, you know, and make sure you put it to our pond, because I kind of started if it's wet, because you know, Lucas makes them, and he's the Prince of Darkness. <laughs> yeah, but I can't put a tarpaulin on it when you're sitting on it. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't, I can't answer that one, Tony. No, I can't answer that. <laughs> anyway, where did you come from? <laughs> Hiya, John, how are you doing? Oh, not so bad. Oh, we're still on to recording, are we? <laughs> yeah, we are, but I can edit that bit out. Welcome to Tony Northeastern again, and I'm glad you've uh, popped in. I didn't even know you were there. 
<laughs> so, uh, what more can you tell us about the South Shield signal box uh, regarding well, the details, finer details? Well, I've told you most of what, of what it was, I suppose, like, you know, but uh, the only thing I can say, there was uh, used to be a wagon run away from Newell Street and crashed through the wall, you know, and uh, we had to get it repaired. All oh, right, so that's the, the wall opposite that's, the, the signal box. Well, the wall is it's farther down where you've got them, um, you know, you've got all the wagons in it. It's part of the yard. All oh, right, so, the so was it? Well, there was, there was a redundant porter um, from Shields. He, he, he was made to have done it and went away to be a brick rear, you know. Uh, they only took six months to train as a brick rear. He had to repair the wall. They called him. Piglips Nelson, and unfortunately, <laughs> but anyway, he repaired the ball, but the wall and were taken a meter out of them and that, you know. But there's nothing else much happened except uh, it, the, the box, box closed a few years after the Royal Train had been there, you know. Ah, uh, right. Um, you mentioned something about a bird or something being carved on the handrail. Uh, carved, it was, but it was an old one, and it must have been a pigeon or something. Someone had carved and it was put on the handrail just on the right hand side of the, the, uh, the would it be left hand side of the box looking at there from, you know, it was on there somewhere. All and right, it, uh, I don't know what it was, it was there, and of course it disappeared. And I never see it anymore when the box shut, of course. Oh. But there's nothing else really about the box to tell you about, except. There was uh, six levers in the box, you see. Six? And there, got, there was six levers, spare levers in the box, spare, as well as the, the running levers. And of course, there was going to be a train run from South Shields down the yard and down past the turntable onto Watman Street, run to the coast, to the TIC at the coast, you see. And there's pictures of the track where uh, they were going to run from the dock and they had it all set set out for uh, running down there uh, in 1939. Hi John, um, you, you sent us a couple of pictures of River Drive Bridge. Can you uh, explain a bit more about about these? Well, there was there was six uh, spare levers in the cabin when I was there, and that was it was stated that they were gonna they were gonna run a train from the dock. Uh, and they run a line for, down past the um, turntable along Watling Street to the TIC on the coast. And they were going to run passenger trains or a, a, either a little uh, motor bus or they wanted to put them pull down there for the, the passengers when they got off the train at the station, jump under there and they went straight to the coast. Ah, right. Because they had everything in, they had the... Um, there's a photograph I can't find of Watling Street and it shows you that where they even dug the, the ground up and put the cable in all the way along. They must be going to put a telephone line or a, a, a signal line in there, you know. But of course, Adolf started the war and this was 1939 and um, as you can see on the photographs, you see where they're building the River Drive Bridge in 39. Mm -hmm. And of course, it, it was after that they couldn't take people to the coast because of the war so it was all abandoned they were going to leave it all after the war gradually they just abandoned it all together yeah because no, the ships were quite close weren't they uh, uh, really late no. uh, they had to push it you see to get them photographs yeah a good find though they? they were taken by a fellow called Cleet he was a, a local photographer you know and he, he was at the presence of mind to go down and take the photographs that's how we know about it, and uh, never happened anyway, uh, Tony. That's a shame because it would have been a would have been a, a, t a tourist attraction on its own, having the line run along the tyne all well, the way down to the pier. Uh, what, uh, well, the people had to get off the trains and walk down. You know, because the station is an awkward place, it's away from King Street, and you had to walk down to get a trolley bus along. You say, well. Trolley buses weren't always empty, you see, but if they could have gotten a train to go deck exactly down there, right to the sandy beaches there, mm -hmm. it would have been, there would have been quids in, you know. It's a, it's a pity that that didn't happen, because, uh, yeah, it's cl quite close to the edge of, of the bankment there, you can actually see the boats. And... Well, there's one of the photographs, it's, uh, I think there's some writing underneath it where somebody's put, they were going to put a station there. Actually, 
there's a mm -hmm. the, 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 the little station like a halt oh, on right, the bank yeah. you yeah. see but the only wrong side of that that in the winter of course if you were on any open that suppose you're only people doing the winter but it might have been slippy and bad weather and the rains and of course it's a fair old gradient wasn't it there mm -hmm. like yeah interesting stuff though well, there's a fella called Les Smith. He uh, was an honor rocker. You kind of deal with these fellas that they knew all about. They're brilliant, you know. They're really interested in the real way. And you've got to admire them from what they know. And Les, he brought it to the attention of people. He put it on uh, Facebook. And it was, I was over the moon at that because nobody would believe me it happened, you see. Right, John, can you tell us a bit more about this uh, Newcastle signal box from 1959? Uh, nice old black and white photograph this is. Well, that, that was the box that replaced the three old pneumatic boxes, uh, number one, two and three, and also the fourth junction one, you know. And uh, it was obsolete actually before it opened in 1959 because it was mooted first before the war and it was started in 1938. And of course, with the war starting, it was abandoned. To it, they had to work on it again in the 50s, and they opened it in 1959. And uh, of course, I, I knew the three uh, signalmen, three signalmen in there, and I also knew the, you see the the, the, the three signalmen. There's a telephone lot at the end, and then there's the uh, two supervisors, and one was the signal inspector. Oh, but it was yeah. all all. all I used to work and it was a, a job, but it was just what it was is switches. You turned a switch and the strip come in. But it was boxes like uh, Tain Yard had the, the modern at that time uh, buttons, you see, button strips. But that was the old fashioned one where they used to turn a, uh, a point and turn a strip for to put a strip in on the switches. But it's as simple as that, it was out of date when it, uh, when it opened, you know. Yeah, it's a shame, isn't it? Right. It's a lot different than the pull lever signal boxes. Well, you can see uh, you can see all the uh, the crossings that, that there was one, and uh, I think they still had um, King Edward Bridge signal box at the uh, end of the the viaduct at uh, the King Edward Bridge, and there was another one. I think it was Borough Gardens to call it, or one of them that used to work the other end of the uh, high level. You know, they had just controlled that specific area in the Newcastle region right in that bit and then you cut all it, you know in this photograph john um you're inside a signal box uh, the tyne yard box can you uh, t tell me a bit more about this because it looks fairly modern oh that one i was uh, i was at tyne yard that was 1991 just before the box closed but the way i got it that was a uh, relief man on the uh, lean side line uh, from 1969 and I used to work there, and most of them worked more of the boxes in the area, up the constant branch and all the way around there, and, and even down to Sunderland, you see, there, Borden Colliery, and uh, uh, boxes round about there. So after a while, uh, this uh, job advertised was advertised as vacant, a vacancy as a relief man at Tain Yard. So I put in for it, I didn't think I'd get it, but I did. So in 1976, I moved from uh, Washington into Tain Yard. And of course, it was a, a new box that was built in, in the well in the 60s, you see, and then, then it closed when I, in, in 1991. So I was there from 1976 till it closed in 91. But it was a box. Uh, it was a modern box, but it was like it wasn't switches. It was like little, little buttons used to work. If you yeah. look, you see there's a panel there, yeah, exactly. and it's full of buttons. And yeah. where, if you wanted to set a, a route, you had to press one button. It started flash. And you press the next one, the route you wanted to set, and the strip would come in, and I'd have put the signals and the uh, points over to that strip, you see. And it, you had the main line run along the top, that's from gated, and we used to have, you kind of see the Durham part, that was just the gated end, and the, um, the signal, well, it was on a the phone there, uh, little buttons on the phone, you used to speak to any press a button and talk, it was all fairly new to me at the time when I first went in. And uh, Gated, uh, Gated was at that side, and at the other side we worked Durham Station, you see. And of course there was the Durham Slow, and beyond that there was Ferry Hill, which was out of what used to end there at Durham Station, you see. So you worked from, say, Lowfell, that's where you see at the top end of the panel, that's Lowfell Junction, you bring the trains in there and the tiny yard, 
And of course, they, they were all dealt with. And uh, but to say, working the job itself was switches on the panel, and you could see the ad, what happened as well, where the signals were coming off. But you see on the top as well, you can see that there's gaps in the in the top. Yeah, and yeah. If there's no strips in, of course, there's no signal. So you had to watch that. You, you put the strips in to clear that junction to get the trains away. But it was all that. One, it was simple enough. You press a button, set the strip, and you had trains at the bottom. I used to run to, run to Carlisle on the Carlisle branch. And there was another one come, right to come down like the hole from uh, Gateshead. Uh, uh, used to come in there. And you had routes outside uh, toward, and you had a branch went up to concert as well, you see. And when I was there, it was a bad accident. I wasn't, well, I was uh, a train, a loose couple of trains had run away from concert, and there's a pair of points, jack points, controlled by Tyne Yard at, mm -hmm. uh, near South Peeler, you see. And it was a case of letting him run, run away down to Tyne Yard, or run him off at the jack points. It was up to the signal to decide, and he thought it was too dangerous to run him to Tyne Yard, so he turned the jack points, and it run off, and it they drive and firemen, they were, I think they were injured, and the whole tree and piled up at South Peeler. But I think if you let them run, it might, you might have slowed down into a tiny yard, it might have been safer, you know. But it's that sort of thing. But we had concert all trains running there from uh, uh, Thornaby. used to come up there, and used to run around the way to concert. And it's just the general traffic. But it was an interesting job, and... Uh, I was planning to run, like everything else, it would run down and run down the traffic. Uh, Tiny Yard is a bit of a white elephant, really, like, and the, the traffic run down. And eventually, in 1991, I, uh, I got a, I was allocated a, a job at um, the IECC, the Charlie Independent and Electronic Computer Centre at Gateshead. And I went in there, and was, and I don't know whether he wants to talk about that, but uh, that's when I left Tiny Yard in '91, you know. All oh, right. It's, it looks a quite a dark place. It's, it's, there's hardly any windows. Oh, I can see, just see a little window there to, to the, the oh, left, well, uh, where the yeah, clock is. <laughs> well, it was, wasn't really dark. The dark place was the IEC at Gated, because you had uh, monitors all the way around. It was computer. You could, it was a depressing place to me, because like, I like the opens. It was fairly light, really. It looked dark there. But that was a big panel, and that was broken all the light on the front. Mm -hmm. But there was a door outside that he could get down the stairs, you know, and mm -hmm. there was a restroom at the back. And my mate was actually having his beer when I was working the panel. I was, on, I was working the whole both parts. There's only two of us on there, you know. But it was a, a good job. But, uh, I've got a photograph I could send you where, where it's standing derelict. Uh, all of the roof had fell in, you know. Mm -hmm. And there was an accident there as well with some kids had been in and they, were, they hurt themselves on it, you know, and they pulled it down eventually. Ah, interesting, John. Very interesting. Aye. Right, I think I think we should call it a day there, John. Thanks again for popping in. It's been a, a pleasure to have you. And, uh, well, we we'll, we'll talk some other time too, and I enjoyed that. I hope I've, uh, I might have got to say I was very impressed with the... the the comments from the people are really, uh, I'm really grateful for them. It's really cheered me up saying that, and I, I didn't think I'd done, done a good job anyway because it was only off the cuff. But I was pleased about that. Yeah, Thank you, you very much, Tony. <laughs> you, you've come, you've become a bit of a celebrity, I think. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> um, there, there was one question. It's at some point, um, not not maybe in a future video. Um, maybe talk about your army life. How would you feel about that? Well, I, I'd like to talk about that. I have a lot of glitches and that, I can tell you, but uh, no, I had a funny off you, I know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so would you come back for that? Five years with an Irish regiment. <laughs> oh, my God, I. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, stay safe and then uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll see you again. Well, thank you very much, uh, Tony. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bye.